you guys, it has been a minute since I filmed a video. I thought I would do a chit chat life update. Do I wanna get ready with me while I do this? I guess I should. You know, this monitor over here makes me look approximately 1,000 times worse than I do in real life. My skin doesn't look this textured. And you know what? Everything went away, my skin would've been just fine, but this little bitch had to pop up. Do you know, stress is a thing and I have been going through it. I'm gonna talk to you guys all about what's been going on for the last week and a half, why the hell I have not been on YouTube. My life literally, poof, blew up. So I got this in the mail last week. Um, Smashbox was kind enough to send this. This is the Smashbox primer water. And so I thought I would give it a shot because I'm not usually a primer user, but I mean, primer water might work. Ooh, mmm. Holy shit, that smells good. I thought I would give these a shot in this video. Makeup Geek was kind enough to send over the new Makeup Geek Showstopper cream stains. And oh my God, you guys, like the packaging on these. I know that like who, who cares about packaging, like right? I, I just find the packaging of these to be beautiful. Look at that. Come on, don't be a little bitch. Look how pretty. It's got this soft touch cap. Oh, I just, I love the packaging of these. And they sent over the entire collection. Thank you, Makeup Geek. I mean, just, what? So much happened in my life last week. You know they say things happen in threes? I feel like they happened in sevens last week. It's just like each day that I would be like, okay, I'm gonna film tomorrow. And I would wake up and then more things would happen. And I was just like, can, can you stop? L'Oreal Pro Glow Foundation. This is the color 202. I think I'm gonna mix in a little 203 because 202 has been looking a little too pale on me lately. Last week on Friday, my husband went and got LASIK, which I know I talked to you guys about. Um, everything went well. He went home, everything was fine. He just had some discomfort in his eyes, but nothing painful at all. I'm gonna film a full video on it. The reason it hasn't come out yet is because yesterday he we went back for the final follow-up appointment and he mentioned to them that he feels like he has a foreign body stuck in his eye. It feels like foreign body meaning like hair or sand or something, you know, it feels like there's just something in there that should not be in there. And so mentioned to them that that was the case and that he felt something in his eye and that he just couldn't see as well out of the eye. And they did an eye exam and they said he's 2025 in that, 2015? 2015 or 2025, I can't remember which one it is. It's five off of what it should be. His left eye is perfect. Everything's good. He can see 2020 in that eye. He, he actually sees better in his left eye than he imagined he would. And then in his right eye, he, he just doesn't see as good as he should. We're gonna talk about all this in the final video when we, you know, we'll do like a Q and A on LASIK so that if any of you are curious, he can talk about his whole procedure and stuff. But anyway, so we're going back tomorrow and he may have to get the flap lifted up and then like cleaned out. They said that there are some cells growing and they're like growing in and it's not common, but it can happen. And it's happening in one of his eyes. He can see and he said it's not something that's like that like he can't live with, but it's just uncomfortable and he can't see as well as he would have hoped. And they're like, oh no, everything should be fine, but I'm just hoping they're not just placating us, you know? There's that. I'm a nervous and paranoid person. When my husband or my family or my pets, if, if everybody's not in 100% perfect health or doing really well, I am a wreck. I need everyone to be happy. <laughs> And that is just something that I've, I've been that way my entire life. I just need everyone to be happy. When I pray, I pray that everyone is safe, happy, healthy. That's the number one thing I pray for. I don't pray for myself. I pray for my family and my friends to stay safe, happy, healthy. That is important to me because they mean everything to me. In the last week, that has not been the case. And as you know, my mom died when I was 16 of breast cancer and it was a really traumatic experience. There were some moments that are like life ruining moments. I mean, I'm okay, but like some things I saw and the last words my mom spoke to me and just having to see that stuff was, is traumatic. I, I've seen a lot of shit. So I am ultra sensitive to things happening to my family. When we were younger and growing up, we used to, as a family, make a joke, nothing bad ever happened to our family. 
Like nobody ever got sick, nobody ever died. We would we would be like, we're so lucky because that never fucking happened. We, we were the healthiest family, we were the happiest family. We were literally the Brady Bunch. Then in the course of a few years, both of my grandparents on my dad's side died. My dad got really sick, he's, he, he's fine. My mom died and then my mom's mom passed away and it just felt like everyone in our family started dropping off and we used to make comment like, nobody in our family ever dies and then like they all did. Um, I have very, very little family left now. Wow, I just like, wiped my eye off and there's like just literally cat hair. Like my life is cat hair. So because of the events of my life going in a way when I was younger where I felt like everything was fine and then in an instant it wasn't fine anymore as far as like my family is concerned. I'm like ultra sensitive to anything happening to my family now. I'm a pretty level headed when it comes to most things but when it comes to my family's safety and their lives, like I'm, I take that very seriously. And I'm not gonna get into detail about what happened last week, everybody's fine. It was just like, traumatic and um, everybody came out of it fine, which is all you can ask for, that's fine. It just shook me up because you just realize how fragile life is and I hate to be like the person to look out on death and to talk about like these sensitive, serious topics as they put fucking makeup on. I mean, please, how weird is this? But I guess um, just to say like life is the most fragile thing and it takes losing people sometimes to realize how much you didn't even realize how fragile it really was. I didn't lose anybody this week, fortunately. Everybody's fine. This world we live in, man, fucking crazy. I just don't handle stress very well. Some people handle stress really well and they can deal with situations as they come and they're fine. And I am I used to be one of those people. I used to be able to handle myself. I can handle a moment of like an emergency very calm. I can be calm in an emergency situation. But stress wise, I, I discovered from the Nick's Face Awards last year, I don't handle that shit very well, like at all, like in any way, shape or form. I was sick to my stomach so much and I just, I just don't do well with moments of intense stress. I kind of shut down and I shut out everything, which is what I did this last week, which is where I disappeared. I was sitting on the couch with my husband. So he's been recovering from LASIK for the last week and I've been taking care of him and making sure he takes his drops on time. And we've just been sitting in a dark house, you know, letting his eyes rest because they're very um, sensitive to light right now. And we've just been, you know, watching movies and stuff like that and just relaxing and spending time together. We don't get to spend a lot of time together because he works a lot. And I have been taking full advantage of having him home, even though it's not been and like just hanging out with my husband. He's recovering from LASIK and his eyes are, you know, burning and stuff like that. And he's been having a little bit of difficulty. We were watching a movie. We were watching Gone Girl, which, fuck that movie. We were sitting there and I had eaten some mac and cheese. Well, we did, we ate for dinner and I, it just sounded good. You know, mac and cheese is just one of those things where you're like, sometimes it just sounds good. And I hadn't had it in a long fucking time. And I uh, have, eating problems. We all know this. We all know this why I'm overweight, why I've gained and lost and you know, it's, there's no surprise to anybody that I have issues with my weight. I'll be the first to admit it. I know that I have a problem. It's not something that I need help with from anybody else. I'm well aware of what the issue is. Anyway, I just need to move on from that. So I had been eating relatively healthy, like, you know, making better choices and not eating as unhealthy, but we decided, you know, let's have mac and cheese. And we were sitting there and I got this blinding stomach pain. and. I don't, I'm not exaggerating when I say that it felt as if I had a kidney stone again. It hit me in 0.2 seconds. It was like, oh, my stomach hurts. <gasps> I was literally screaming in pain. And your first reaction might be, bitch, why didn't you go to the hospital? Well, I will tell you why. Because I have. Uh, I've gotten this pain before and have gone to the doctor for it. I remember me and my sister were driving down to Ikea one day and I got it and I flipped around and I was like, okay, I'm going to the doctor. I went there, they give me an H. pylori test. They tell me to go on a low fat vegan diet for a while and then slowly incorporate foods back in and it gets better and it works. It works every time. And so I am not going to go spend hundreds of dollars at the doctor, especially because my insurance right now is horrible. I had to switch insurances because my um, insurance company kicked me off because of the county I live in. They don't 
service this county anymore. I didn't go to the doctor, especially for stomach pains, because even though I know abdominal pain can be an emergency situation, for me, I've discovered that when I have abdominal pain, it's almost always related to either my gallbladder or a kidney stone, which I've only had one kidney stone, and I can tell that pain. That pain is 20 out of 10. It's it's truly, and I, I say this with confidence, I could imagine one of the worst pains a human could ever experience. I get cluster headaches, which is the most painful brain condition in, in the history of the world, and I would take a cluster headache over a kidney kidney stone any day. Kidney stones are 20 out of 10. They feel like you're being cut in half with a fucking chainsaw or something. I, I don't know. This pain was very similar to a kidney stone. I was rocking on the floor. I was crying. I was screaming. I was projectile vomiting. I was like, holy shit sick. I was down. I could not keep anything down. Every, like I, I had to go lay in the hottest bath possible and just cry and writhe. That hit me and lasted for about six hours, I would say, until about two o'clock in the morning when I was finally able to drift off and sleep and then I haven't experienced pain since then. But it's been about four days since I experienced this. So I had to not eat for an entire day just to give my stomach a rest. I didn't eat for a full 24 hours and then I slowly started incorporating in fruit. So banana, apple, and I ate a strawberry that day. But I have to really keep it super minimal. But I realized, I, I think I know what this pain is. I actually don't know what the pain is, but I got my gallbladder taken out about five or six years ago. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I can't really eat fat, but what's weird is like one day, let's say I'll go and I'll eat a burger. Let's just say, fine, I'm totally fine. And then a week later, I mean, the whole time I'm just eating like as I want. I don't, there's no, there's no rhyme, no reason to just eat whatever I want, when I want, it's just totally fine. And then one day I'll eat a, like a bowl of mac and cheese and I was in uh, utter unbelievable pain. I don't know what happened, but it just, with the family emergency we had, we had a second family emergency, both with close family members. And then we had my husband's eye issue and then my stomach issue. And then we watched Avery one of those nights, which is my niece. I don't know if you guys know, I have a five-year-old niece. I love her more than anything in the world. She stayed over and she was just down. She just didn't look good. I was like, are you okay? And she's just like, yeah, I'm fine. And like, do you feel okay? Yeah, I'm fine. And just after like a few hours, I was like, dude, you're not fine. You don't look good. You, you're you acting weird. You're making me nervous. So I took her temperature and she had 102.2 or something like that temperature. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? You told me you feel fine. You have a fever. And she's like, I feel fine. I'm like, okay, you don't feel fine because I can tell you're weird. So I went to the store and I got her some Tylenol and she was staying the night that night. So I got her some Tylenol and it helped. It brought her fever down. We played, we were playing, uh, you know, she was a unicorn and I was a bear and we were like playing for a couple hours, pretending, it was really fun actually. I had such a fun time pretending with my niece. Like you think that maybe sounds kind of weird, but if you just let all the weirdness go and just be a bear for a minute, it's kind of fun. We all went to sleep that night. We fell asleep watching a movie. About two hours later, I wake up and my husband is going, Avery, Avery, are you okay? And I'm very, again, particular and, and very protective of my family. And so I jump up, we slept on the couches because we wanted to watch a movie. Well, we don't have a TV in our bedroom yet. I jumped up and she's like shaking. I thought she was having a fucking seizure, dude. I literally freaked out. I was about to call 911. I was, she was like shaking, like involuntarily. I couldn't wake her up. I was like, oh my God, dude, she had such a high fever in the night. I didn't wake up and give her her Tylenol in time. Um, she, she, she's having a seizure. And so Zach was like, Avery, 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 are you okay? Okay. And we we're like trying to wake her up and I'm like literally this by the way this all this all happened in the span of about 15 seconds So it makes it sound like I'm waiting 10 minutes No, this all happened about the span of 15 seconds and I'm like dude I'm about to call 911 and Zach was like do you need to go potty and she was like no And I was like, you know what? We should just take her potty Maybe she's just like has to pee girl peed like a fire hose amount out and then she was just totally fine But she was dead sleeping like full on asleep like shaking and so I talked to my sister the next day. I'm like, dude, your kid did this like weird shaking thing at night. She goes, oh yeah, she shakes like that. Like her, it's her body's response to having to pee in the middle of the night uh, is that she gets real shaky like that. And I should have told you that. I'm like, bitch, yes, you should have told me that. I literally was having a fucking heart attack. It's like, instead of waking up, wait, like most people do, like their bodies just wake them up. She just like, she gets all like squirmy and shaky. And I thought she was having a fucking seizure and she was apparently just had to pee. So I felt like an idiot. Imagine taking her into the emergency room being like, rush her in, and then she just has to pee. Man, all I can tell you is it has been a week and I haven't been, I just can't film. When I get into that mode, I get it. Family comes first, everybody else comes first, and that's the way it realistically is. I know this is my job, but one of the luxuries of having a job like this is being able to take the time off if I need to, and I, I needed to. And so we're going back into the doctor tomorrow for Zach's final appointment, and again, they may need to lift up the flap and like rinse it out and 
hopefully it heals normally. <laughs> I don't like my baby boy feeling this way and I just love him so much and we've been spending time together because he's been off for like a week now off of work because of his LASIK and it's not rekindled our love but like really solidified it. Like I've always known that I love him more than anything in the world but right now I like never want him to work again and I want him to just be with me constantly. I love him so much. It's like a sickening amount, dude. Like it's a sickening amount. I just, we've been together for 12 years now. Uh, coming up in August, it'll be 12 years. And then we've been married coming up on seven. I feel so much love towards the guy right now. I just want to remarry him. Last week we were, um, that was one of the things we did is we were watching gameplays of really creepy games on, it was computer games actually. We were watching the Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh. Do you want to scream? Do you want to scream? Do you want to shit your pants? Do you want to be on the edge of your seat? And you'll look at it and you'll be like, this game doesn't look scary. Oh, heavens to Betsy. That game, I was like literally screaming. I was screaming at Five Nights at Freddy's. No, we weren't even playing it. We were watching some YouTuber guy play it. Oh my god it was so horrifying so in my festival style makeup tutorial that i did before i used the kitten karma color from stila and now i have this one the diamond dust and i want to use this today so i think i'm going to do like some crazy ass cut crease right now so i'm going to go in with my coastal scents 252 palette I'm probably gonna do a mixture of these blues and some of these purples. I know that these look kinda icky, um, but I've just been using these for years and I still love them. Some people talk shit about Coastal Scents, but you know what? They're like exactly the same as Morphe eyeshadows, so I'm gonna go in with like a warmer purple color. So I think I'm gonna take this one here from Coastal Scents. By the way, these eyeshadows I feel are underrated and they are 252 eyeshadow colors for like 25 bucks, so you really can't go wrong. I'm just gonna lightly push that into the crease and they blend like a fucking dream, man. I don't know why people hate on Coastal Scents. Probably because they're Coastal Scents and like, who is that, you know? But yes, we watched Moana last week and it's, for some reason I just, I wasn't interested in it. It didn't give me any of the feels. Like when I watched the commercial, I don't know. I just feel like they didn't advertise it well enough for me to want to watch it. I love Disney. I love Pixar. I know it's not a Pixar movie, but I'm all into anything Disney. And so for some reason, I just didn't feel interested in it. There are some Disney movies that I didn't love. I know some people will be like, oh, what? We watched it and it changed my life. I love Moana so much. I've probably watched it four times in the last week and I've listened to the soundtrack just for fun. <laughs> we were driving around and I, I just was like, I can't get enough of this fucking movie. It's so good. If you guys have not seen it yet, highly, highly recommend. So, so good. It's just one of those movies that there's nothing about it I don't love. There's nothing about it that I don't love. It is such a well-rounded, beautiful movie. The soundtrack is just like heavenly. I haven't heard anything like it. It's just, it's like, it just feels so reminiscent of a classic Disney movie to me. It's beautiful. If you have not seen Moana yet, I would highly suggest you do everything in your power to watch it ASAP. And I wonder if you'll become as obsessed with it as I am because I'm just, I can't get enough of it. The only reason I'm really using purple right now is because I posted a poll on Twitter and I was like, what color do you guys want to see? And I feel like the overwhelming majority of you were like, um, purple, please. How could you hate 252 eyeshadow colors for 25 bucks? And for people to say the quality's not there, I just, I don't, I just don't see what you're talking about. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. I don't fucking know, man. I'm gonna do like a half cut crease too. I think I'm only gonna bring the concealer in like halfway and then blend it in. This whole eye look so far has been done with the Sigma E40. I haven't switched brushes at all. This is my Luxie 237 blending brush and I just, one of my all time faves. It's so nice. So I'm taking some of those deeper purples, concentrating them right in the crease. So I'm gonna go in with my Smith 302 brush and my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, and I'm just going to cut the inner crease to make it look nice and clean. I don't know if I, if I breathed at all during that moment. But I believe I saw Manny do an eye look like this where it was 
like half cut crease with a glitter liner so if it wasn't him I will link it who it was in the description of this video but I believe I saw him do a look like this that was in like pinkier tones not that long ago I'm gonna take that Luxie brush with a little bit of a lighter purple color and tap off a majority of the excess and then just kind of blend in the concealer we finished Bates Motel, which, no spoilers, but okay. I'm gonna take a little tiny brush. I think I'm gonna go in with my little Sigma small eyeliner brush, and I'm going to use the Stila Magnificent Metals Diamond Dust. Oh, it is so beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see, it has a reflect of colors in it that I, I didn't know it had. It's got, it's like a, it's a diamond. It's a it's like a crystal, a diamond. I'm going a little above the crease so that I can actually see it when my eyes are open. Frankly, it paints on like a dream. These are probably my new favorite product I've ever used. Oh my God, I love them. I'm gonna start all the way in the inner corner here where it's lighter and then sort of diffuse out when it gets to the purple. Stunning, literally the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. This is the NYX lip of the day in the color Taboo. And I don't care if it's Taboo, I'm gonna use it on my eyes. <laughs> it doesn't say don't use on the eyes. Ooh, it's like duochrome. We watched the movie Creep last night on Netflix. Oh my God, if that movie didn't make me so uncomfortable. I would recommend it if you don't mind being uncomfortable. I'm gonna use the Rimmel Scandalize Waterproof Cool Pencil. Throw a coat on mascara and some lashes. Kat Von D Shade and Light Contour Palette and I'm going to use the color Subconscious. Highlight, I think I'm gonna go very basic and go in with the Balm Mary Luminizer. I think I'm gonna try this out, which is the, this is the new Makeup Geek Showstopper Cream Stains. This is the color Electric Slide. Oh, it's dark. I just got done watching Marlena's video on this on YouTube and she did mention that you do need two coats if it's a darker shade. I'm gonna clean up the edges of this with concealer Go fix my hair and I will be right back. And this is the finished look. I hope you guys like it. The lip is dark, but very comfortable. I would say it feels like, uh, I mean, a liquid lipstick, but pretty transfer proof. I'd say a tiny bit came off, but not bad at all. I wanted to try some of the nude colors and this is the color do -Si do Probably the most perfect nude. Like this is, I think, my perfect nude color. Oh my God, it's my perfect nude. I'm gonna take a little bit of this color, which is Quick Step, and I'm going to put that in this, just the center of my lips to add a little more depth. This is me, we're talking. Oh my God, that color is beautiful. Okay, looks like I found my new favorite lip combo. All right, and that is this eye with a nude lip, and I love this. I love a nude lip. It's far more flattering to me. I just think for my face, even though I have small lips, I just love nude lips. It's my favorite thing ever. You guys know me. I don't have to explain myself to you. All right, well, I guess that's it for this video. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys like this makeup look, and I hope you like the chatty get ready with me. Those seem to be your guys' favorites, so thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you follow me on all my other social media stuff. It's all Raw Beauty Christie, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Periscope, 
you know the drill. I give updates a lot more frequently on places like Snapchat and Instagram stories than I do on YouTube. So if you don't know where I am, you're like, why hasn't that bitch posted a video? That's where you'll find out. All right, I love you guys. Thank you so much, and I will see you at my next video. Bye.